Hello and welcome to PlayStation Racer. My name is Mitchell Morgan and today we're going to be heading over to Suzuka for a new World Touring Car 900 race. It happens to be one of the menu books. For this one we need to do Autopolis, New Bergering and Suzuka. It's one of the new ones in the 1.40 update. It's menu book number 48. So we're going to satisfy one of the elements of that menu book. Also in this race, although it is a world circuit race, it's also one of the weekly challenge races this week. So I'm going to hit three points in one in this particular video. The race difficulty that I've chosen is hard. The race difficulty that we are using for all of these races. And if you want to do this one nice and easily, then I would say go with the Super Formula car because it is going to be a lot, lot quicker. We've done all of the other World Circuit races here. We just need to do this one. So the, work, the Super Formula definitely with its downforce would be ideal around here. But I wanted to use a GT car for a GT race. So I went the, with the Ferrari VGT. My car set up, I actually swapped that out to mediums because I found that the hards weren't really good enough. Uh, they weren't quite quick enough. And with the one-stop strategy with the mediums, this really did work. But I did need to change the output adjustment to 93, the power restrictor also to 93. And I ended up setting the ballast to 199 just to bring those performance points just below that magic 900 that we needed. Once I did that, all of the other settings on this car were pretty much standard. As you'll see in a moment, just when I move across, now that we've got that all set, 899.97. And you'll see that everything else there is pretty much standard for this particular car. So just those mods that were needed with regards to the tuning. So this is the World Touring Car 900. It's at Suzuka, 10 laps. And we are really going to have to go for it in this one. So let's see how we do. So here we go. I'm setting the fuel map to power level number three. I've got the brake balance in the middle and I've also got traction control set to off. And the first thing we've got to do is to really monster these slower cars and try and get through them as quickly as we can. So. There's no point me going through all of my individual braking points and gears and everything at the moment because everything tends to be a little bit dynamic as we're making our way through this traffic. You'll also notice that there is a little bit of door banging and bumper shoving. British touring car style is the way that I refer to it, but you've got to get through the traffic to make this work. Like I said, if you just want a really easy race, just go with the Super Formula because the extra downforce is going to enable you to go around this so quickly you won't have a problem. However, I wanted a VGT car, I wanted a GT car, and so I'm having to work a little bit harder. The Fuel Map 3 hopefully is going to give us five laps of fuel. So I'm going to split the strategy into five laps and five laps. I'm going to be running the racing medium tyres on both. And you're going to notice that the racing medium tyres are going to be pretty much worn out by the time we get to the first pit stop and also at the end of the race. So one of the things that you need to do at this stage is just to try and look after your tyres. If you find that you are squealing your tyres in the corners, there may be brake a tad earlier, turn in a little bit more smoothly, back off the power a little bit. Try not to take too much life out of those tyres at this precise moment in time. Just getting to the back of the Mercedes there a little bit at the moment. I just said that we do need to get through this traffic and um, quite a few of the cars fell quite nicely for me in this one. I will be honest, but one of the two of the cars I did catch up on corners. And yeah, just giving them a little bit of a push through the corner to keep the, uh, the speed going was one of the things that I needed to do. So we're on lap two of 10 at the moment, chasing down the number 14 and 13 cars in front of us. Again, just going through the S's, you wanna keep the power on, but keep it controlled. Don't slide the car around too much. Look for overtaking opportunities. Very often there's one on this corner to go up the inside. Then trying to pick up a slipstream off of the Mercedes in front and thinking all the way around this track of where the overtaking points are where you're going to catch up with cars. And there's no real op op overtaking opportunity through there against the Mercedes because it's very, very quick. But I did get an opportunity down the right hand side, but I need to bury the brake pedal, getting it all the way down to the second gear for that particular hairpin. 
and then using third gear on the way out for traction. That tended to be one of the overtaking points that worked quite well for me. Also going up the inside as we approached Spoon, that was sometimes an opportunity. I tried to go around the outside there, that didn't really happen. So I've just tucked inside and managed to get that done midway through Spoon by coming down into third gear for a bit of rotation and then back on the power. And as you'll see, when you're getting past the cars, you can actually drop them quite quickly and catch up with the next one in front. So it is finding your way around these cars that is the main, the main point of, of winning this one, keeping it quick, but also getting through the traffic. And as I said, if that involves a few bumps, that involves a few bumps. So as we come across the line, we've got three seconds or so to frag in front of us. As I'm heading down into this corner, I'm looking for just before the 50 meter board, there's also a bit of tarmac there. Bury the brake pedal all the way down into fourth gear. Just come around this corner, almost like a compound corner in fourth. I found that worked quite well for me. Up in the fifth briefly before dropping down into fourth. And through the S's, I found fourth to be really good. Just easing off between, powering through, powering on, powering off, powering on, powering off was the way that it worked for me. As we come out of the S's up into fifth gear, just trying to get on the back of the yellow car in front, up into sixth, I'm gonna go right on the track there. Didn't quite manage to get that one pulled off. Dive down the inside into this one using third for rotation and to get that move done. And you can see how quickly you can leave cars behind. Middle of this curb, braking all the way down into second gear. As soon as you hit the apex, try and get it up into third. I was a little bit late on the exit, that one. But up into third on the apex so that you can get drive off of the corner. Sixth through here, now I'm looking for just about the 100 meter board, breaking a straight line, down into fourth gear. As you get to the middle of spoon, down into third for a bit of rotation, up into fourth as quickly as you can and try and get that power down as smoothly as you can. Now I must apologize, I've got flu at the moment, so my voice is sounding a little bit strange, but I did want to get this video done because a lot of you have been asking for it. 3130R, just seventh gear through there, lifting slightly occasionally, just trying to carry as much speed through. The 150 meter board, bury the brake pedal down into third, just jump over those two curbs, you can take a lot of the curb through there, and then up through the gears as we come across to finish the lap. I've got a couple of cars in front of me, so I'm gonna to have to think about whether I go to the left or the right. I've gone to the left, which is a little bit dangerous. Managed to just about pull that off, but got very squirrely on the braking, which let those two cars through. So I went for the right-hand side, managed to get the Honda NSX done. Now I've got the Audi, which we managed to do on the inside as we went into the S's. Again, using fourth gear through here, on the throttle, off the throttle, on the throttle, off the throttle. Just trying to carry as much speed through there as you exit the S's up into fifth. Be careful not to go too wide. Carry as much speed as you can through here. Then we're looking out for the 100 meter board. Sometimes I was braking more towards the 50. So between the 100 and 150, depending how you're feeling. And then you can get it slowed down and turned in. But watch the tires. If you look at the tires at the moment, we're on lap number four of 10 and we haven't got a lot of tire that wear left, even though I've been trying to drive this as carefully as possible. So again, even if I'm calling out braking points and turning points, at this point, things are changing. The car is starting to slide around a little bit more. I haven't quite got the braking performance that I have previously, and I'm having to adjust that accordingly. So I've said again, pause, rewind the video, and just have a look at the different braking points and turning points throughout this race if you are having problems. But for me, this one really was more about the car and the fuel map and the strategy. After that, it's just a case of running it and running it and running it until you can get this car around here as quickly as possible, slipstreaming cars when you can and getting those overtakes done as quickly as you can. With regards to my times, uh, ignore the first one, but we've got a 149, 150, and a 151. So relatively consistent, but you'll notice that the lap times are falling off a little bit as the tyre wear very much disappears as it has at this point in the race. So we are really only just started 
lap number five and I've practically lost all of the tyre wear on the front so having to be very very careful but this Ferrari VGT you still can push it quite quickly even with very little um, tyre wear. You saw there that was my first mistake I got that out onto the gravel managed to gather that one up quite nicely tyres are a little bit dirty now so just having to be a little bit careful but I did manage to cover that one off without losing too much time so we'll press on and this race is not necessarily clean so if you could have a clean race then you could do this quite easily and again if you're an A or a B racer you should be able to do this one with the strategy very very easily I'm only a B rated racer average at best so if I can do this most average racers should be able to do it so 100 meter board slowing it down as we go into spoon just coming down a third to get a little bit of rotation as Spoon tightens, back up to fourth, pushing as hard as we can now up into fifth as we approach one, um, the next corner, the left hand one. I'm looking for around about the 50 meter board and if you're brave you can get through here without braking and without changing down. However, with the tyres the way that they are, I was using the gears just to slow the car down a little bit and occasionally I was lifting. So we're going to dive into the pits now. Be careful of the way in. And I'm going to go with racing medium tyres for the second time. We've managed to do five laps on these tyres quite happily. So hopefully we should be able to get to the end of the race on another set of mediums. And hopefully we'll be able to bring this home for a win. So when we came in, I think we were around about seventh or eighth when we came in. We're dropping down the order now. We're looking to grab five laps of fuel because we're starting lap number six. I did actually push the button a little bit late, so it was just just below completely full. Uh, although even on the gauge, it actually looks as if it was full. Watching the line on the way out there of the pit lane, and then just being very careful at the moment because remember we are on cold tyres. They may well have been under blankets, but they're still effectively cold. So just being a little bit careful through here. Also, just getting used to the new tyre wear. How grippy is this new set of tyres? How much can we actually push them? So I was very careful through the S's. Starting to build up a little bit of confidence as we come around this long left-hander. Looking for the 50 meter board now, breaking a little bit before getting over the kerb. So although the 50 meter board is a little bit late for that one most of the time in this particular race i was looking for the 100 and breaking on or just after the 100 meter board that really was my main reference point for that particular corner going through the hairpin again down its second gear and then third for rotation sorry second gear for rotation and then third gear on the way out just keeping it flat through here, just staying in sixth gear for the moment, down at the fifth at the 100 meter board, down at the fourth as we hit the apex there, third for rotation mid spoon, up into fourth as quickly as we can, up into fifth, sixth, maybe even seventh as we go down here, really depending on how I was feeling, I didn't really get up into weights very much, seventh and I've actually got the confidence in the tyres here, so pretty much flat through there, 150 meter board and then we just got it a little bit wrong through there that was my one big mistake that cost me some time and I did wonder whether that had actually blown it for this particular race and now I'm in a situation where I've really really got to push this so four laps to actually run we're on lap number seven at the moment breaking nice and late into this corner fourth midway through the compound corner just keeping four through there I'm then going to come up the fifth and then down at the fourth as we go through the S's here, just trying to carry as much speed as I can, but without sliding the car around too much. We don't want to take out too much tyre wear at this stage in the race. Remember, we're going to have no tyres at the end of the race and we may well still have cars to overtake. So just continuing to run as quickly as we can. I've got the, I think it's near NSX in front of us very slow through that corner has enabled us to close up really really nicely going to throw it up the right hand side of that car getting it slowed down all the way down into second gear getting it rotated third on the apex so we can get the drive out of the corner and you can see by being really audacious and really diving 
into the inside of that corner for that car, we've now really been able to drop it. If we got caught behind that car, we'd have just been losing way, 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 way too much time. And that's why, as soon as you see an opening, you've really got to go for it in this particular race, even if that means dive bombing a car, even if it means banging doors, even if it means rubbing a bumper on the way in. It's just what you've got to do. If you want to get first place in this race in a GT car, now there may well be other cars that are better than the Ferrari VGT, but this was the car that I liked. This was the one that had the Pogue, it had the performance, it had the stability, it had the turning. It basically had everything that really suited me. You'll notice that the fuel map still is on three. And you'll also notice that when we came in, we have very, very little fuel left. You could do some fuel saving if you want to, if you're concerned, just upshift a little bit earlier on the gears. This VGT actually quite likes to be um, the gears to be midway. And you'll notice that sometimes I am changing up midway, sometimes I'm revving it right out. I really didn't have a feel for which was better. So I just did whatever worked for me wherever I was on the track and what the situation was at that point. So again, braking just after the 100 meter board there, braking at the end of that curve, looking out for the green bit on the inside there. And then I'm gonna brake nice and late on this one, midway down that curve, look for the apex, gone a little bit deep onto that one but we still came up into third midway through the corner to give us some traction and what I'm hoping to do is to get on the back of fourth place midway through spoon so really leading the braking late now late lunge fourth gear riding the curb all the way out third I could actually go a little bit wider um, to have a better angle of attack on the latter part of spoon but in this car, I didn't even find that that line worked quite nicely for me and I was quite comfortable with that. Coming through this left-hander, again, really just very, very committed in seventh gear, 150 metre board, getting that slowed down, really closing up on the fourth and third place cars now. I really, really, really needed to stay on the back of them, but getting the power down, the back end was squirming. We didn't get the power down cleanly, but We've got a couple of cars that have pitted, which has promoted us now up into third place. And with effectively two laps to go, I can see second and first in front of me. So now it's all about keeping this clean. It's all about keeping the performance up. It's all about looking after the tyres. It's all about racing. It's all about really going for it and trying to bring this home, but without any more mistakes. We've already had two mistakes in this race. That's cost us badly, but it looks like we've had a good run and we've managed to close down the two cars in front. The time at the moment is around about one second to the car in front. We really need to keep within that one second so we can get slipstream benefit wherever possible. Also, I'm looking for a dive bomb into a corner or some way that I can get around this car because at this point, we've got a bit deep into that one. That's not gonna help at all. At this point, what I'd like to do is to get around the blue car during this lap and then get on the back of Kawakami in first at the beginning of the next lap, which gives me a whole lap to try and get past him. So at the moment, with Kawakami two and a half seconds down the road and with the blue car in front of us still a second away, it's all looking a little bit doubtful and a little bit hit and miss as to whether this will happen, but we're gonna go for it. So down in the six for a little bit of rotation because my tires are now completely shot and the car's moving around. Braking really late into the chicane, closing up really, really close, taking all of the curves on the way out. I wanted to have that car beaten by that lap, but hey, Kawakami's dived into the pits, which has promoted us up into second, and then we got a run on the first place down this straight. He's closing up on us, so I have to close the door and defend ever so slightly on that particular one. Fourth gear through here, I've gone power level two now, if you notice. I managed to um, save a little bit of fuel over the last few laps. So power level two was what enabled me to get that move done down the start-finish straight. Now, I just want to get it through the S's, 
leaving it on that power level two. I've got a little bit of tire left, so I'm leaning on them a little bit through the S's just to try and build a little bit of a gap to the car behind. Again, leaving my braking really late, looking for the apex, braking at the end of that curb, looking for the apex again, third gear. We're gonna come down to this hairpin. So again, braking midway down that curb, down into second gear, getting it turned in, third on the apex so that we don't spin up those tires too much on the way out. We try and get the traction down as quickly as we can. And I'm trying to get up through the gears as quickly as I can at the moment so as to not use too much more of the tyre through wheel spin. Down into fourth as we go into spoon, you're going to drop down into third as we get to the middle of spoon just to get that rotation and try and keep the tyres as good as possible. The tyres now on the front are completely gone. They are completely red and I've got next to no tyres on the rear and the car behind is only seven tenths behind. One mistake, and this is all gonna be over. I've only got half a lap of fuel left, so the fuel saving worked. Going to the power level two worked. Third gear through here, just because I don't want any wheel spin. I don't want that back end coming around. And as we enter this last corner, that is it. That is the win. No tires left, next to no fuel left. Heart pounding and we had to really, really go for it. I've had a number of people on my social media just recently that have been saying, you can't do this in a GT car, you've got to do it in a Formula car. Well, there you go. That is how to do it as an average racer in a GT car. The gold trophy, first place, wasn't easy. I've got my 500,000 for my weekly bonus. I've got my first stamp, for this menu book and that world circuit race is done. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and you found it useful. If you have, please hit the like button. If you're new around here, please hit the subscribe button because that will really help the channel no end. And you leave me a comment if you will, if you found this one useful. And if you're back for more as a current subscriber, thanks ever so much for your continued support. It's greatly appreciated. And I'll see you on another video coming very, very soon. For now, take care. Bye-bye.